Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates, and I'm continuing my series on and journey with recovery from trauma, and I'm learning a lot, and I have a lot to share. I'm not going to share much this week. This week's video is entitled, Love Yourself as if your life depends on it. And that's not original to me. That is the work of a man named Kamel Ravikant. R-A-V-I-K-A-N-T. He wrote a book and had an audio book called Love Yourself as If Your Life Depends on It. And I think it's a brilliant book and I would like to talk a little bit about it. If you suffer from abandonment trauma or post-traumatic stress or panic attacks or just abandonment issues, you're going to need a lot of help from a lot of different directions. And I have been searching through the universe and the world for helpful, healing, truthful information that can make a difference primarily for my own recovery process but I do I do have a sense that I have a calling to help many of you folks out there I am in the process of writing a book about my experience and about my healing the title of the book is going to be in the eye of the tiger and it's going to be an unusual book because I'm not going to write anything down. I'm going to make 20, 25 different videos. And each, each video is a chapter. And uh, I'm not going to put those on YouTube. I'm going to uh, sell them uh, on our website and anywhere that I, I can. I, I feel like I have a very powerful story. And I feel like I have so many pieces of the puzzle that can help you heal. And my healing is going well. It's going slowly. I want it to be quicker. But I'm learning some things that are just really helpful. The, the, the most powerful things that you can learn is insights into yourself. Things that are true about you. And I've been learning a lot of those. So, um, well, let's get into the material. Eight years ago, I was recently divorced and I was dating quite a bit from the 1st of June until the 12th of September. I was out on a date four or five nights a week. I was in an active relationship addiction looking for love in all the wrong places. I went out on many dates where in the first bit of conversation, the first date, uh, it got on to the subject of, I don't know, how do you find happiness? How do you find that special person you're going to settle on? And it seemed like every woman I went out with knew a secret that I didn't know. <laughs> And they told me the secret, but I still didn't know it. I'm going to tell you the secret. It's the title of this book, of this video. Love yourself like your life depends on it. So all these women would tell me, you can't really be happy or find somebody who makes you happy until you love yourself. I must have heard that ten times. Uh, never heard it from a man, but all these women knew it. I don't know how many of them were practicing it, but they knew it. Then on September 12th, I met the woman who was going to be my fiance and that I was going to be with for six and a half years. And we both were desperately needy relationship addicts who needed to find our love and esteem in the arms of another person. Uh, she very soon was in the arms of myself and another man, uh, the whole of our relationship, because 
she was so desperately needy and she couldn't really say no to being love bombed with all kinds of addictive attention. And um, you might say, well, gee, Mark, that's just horrible. You were terribly treated. You were terribly victimized. But I really wasn't. Um, when you play with fire, you get burned. When you build a life upon addiction, uh, you get burned. Um, the wages of sin is death. Uh, all those things that, that uh, remove victim mentality. It's bad enough when you go through trauma and abandonment. But if it feels unfair, if it feels like the universe has conspired against you and it's just not fair, it makes the pain so much worse. But the truth is always, uh, in any relationship, the responsibility for the issues is 50%, 50%. And your life, however, and your safety is 100% your responsibility. So what gets in the way of being able to love oneself? I'm talking about deep down in your belly. Do you love yourself behind the walls of counterdependency, the behind the walls of any addiction you might have developed, including workaholism, attention, sex, alcohol, busyness, affirmation, money, food. There are so many addictions you can hide behind, especially achievement and success and money is a great defense mechanism uh, combination because you're searching to be good enough on the outside and you look like a million bucks but on the inside, you don't really love yourself. And I am actually quite grateful for <clears throat> the unmasking, the tearing down, the shattering of that outer counterdependent wall to reveal a needy little boy who did not know how to love himself and really didn't know how to love others and did a poor job of loving my fiance. So I'm grateful. For the growth, uh, I, I wanted solitude. Now I am blessed with lots of solitude in my quiet big house. And I'm going to write a book, and I am happy and blessed. Uh, but everything is pointing me in that one direction. I'm going to be doing in, in my book, and probably next week I'll be sharing about internal family systems. It's this brand of therapy that I've come along, that um, come across written by or inspired by Richard Swartz, Dr. Richard Swartz. Uh, it was referred to me by my therapist, uh, Paul Hartman. It's brilliant. This stuff is awesome. And it says the problem is uh, these broken off pieces, these exiled pieces of yourself that don't love you that are empty and full of abandonment and sadness and they don't love you. So you seek it from other people. And who do you seek it from? What other people do you seek it from? You seek it from people who are going to abandon you and crush you and betray you. That's what love is, folks, unfortunately. And then this Camille Ravikant, he has a little book. You can get it on Amazon.com. You can download it on Audible. Dot com and love yourself like your life depends on it. The, the book cover startled me and attracted me. It's actually a picture, I think, of Kamel himself, uh, his silhouette, and he's got a gun to his head. And all you can see is a red heart. And the message is clear. If you don't love yourself, you know, your life may depend upon it. It may depend upon it. And so he is brilliant, and I'll get back to him in a second. 12-step work uh, is really addresses um, an emptiness in your soul that you need to be aware of and on top of and not cover over with addiction or you're going to get yourself in trouble. 
an author named Byron Katie, who I'll also talk about in my book and probably in coming videos uh, on YouTube and blogs. Brilliant lady, Byron Katie. Real weird name, because first name Byron, last name Katie. Everybody calls her Katie. But the same, she has the same message, and that is be a lover of what is. Don't feel victimized by people who are consistently who they are. And if you invited them into your life, they're there as a blessing, as good. And love what is, not what should be. Is it true? She has four questions that you ask yourself. I'll get to her, but brilliant, brilliant, brilliant woman. And she says the same thing. Uh, the problem is you. And relationship pain is none other than an opportunity to change how you think about you and, and heal yourself. And uh, of course, my, my good friend Pilar is also telling me the same thing. You got to love yourself. So it must be true. So love yourself like your life depends upon it. Download the book on audible.com. Download it off of amazon.com in written form. And Kamel, I thought he was like in his 20s from his voice. He, he does the audio, but he has silver hair, so he must be older than that. He lives in San Francisco, and he's uh, an entrepreneur or he was, I don't know if he's shifted career to inspirational stuff. He was an entrepreneur uh, in Silicon Valley, you know, with technology of some sort and had a company and um, his company didn't do well. He just came out of a breakup. A good friend had passed away and he was sick and he was depressed. And he, he was really spiraling downward and then he came across this piece of truth that I'm talking about that uh, really, if you're going to be happy in a relationship, in a career, in a life, you really need to heal your wounds and, and love yourself. And how he did it was unusual. I wouldn't have thought of it. But he shares two meditations and a question. And the first meditation is play some music for seven minutes. On the inhale, say this simple phrase, I love myself. And then on the exhale, share whatever comes up for you. Um, I've done this meditation three times and I've cried the whole throughout the whole thing all three times. It's very powerful. It's very healing. He also encourages you to just go through your day and just say that to yourself. What it does is it rewires your brain. I love myself. I love myself. Sometimes I say, Mark, I love you. Um, sometimes I say, I loves me some Mark Smith. Um, <laughs> um, but it feels good to say it. And I believe it is rewiring my brain. Kamel said after a month of really working hard on these meditations, the other meditation is go stand in the mirror and look at yourself in your left eye and just for five minutes say it, just stare yourself down. I love myself. I love myself. Sounds corny folks, but I'm telling you, he said within a month he was physically healthy, he was happy and all kinds of wonderful positive energy and wonderful positive people were coming into his lives. I've been doing this practice, he calls it a practice of self-love. And I've been involving myself in Camille's practice for probably f maybe not quite a week. And I can feel a lot of positive energy and a little bit of spunk and a little bit of hope. Right after I started this practice was when I had the energy to start my book. I've started, uh, I am writing the first chapter. I'm going to give the first chapter away for free. But the energy and the spunk to write the book came from... Uh, a burgeoning sense of healthy self-love. The question that he asks you to ask and that he asks himself is simply, does whatever action or behavior or relationship reflect that you love yourself or not? And if the answer is no, you step away from that relationship or that piece of work or that friendship or 
that activity. So I'm certainly not advocating for narcissism here. This is not narcissism. This is really healthy self-esteem and, and healthy identity and having joy within you and not needing to cover up your, your dark abandonment pain and your sadness and your emptiness and not go find it in another person. My relationship addict has been anxious to get out and date again. If, if anybody gets contacted by me for a date, uh, run. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not quite ready yet. I'm still piecing myself together and rewiring my brain and reorganizing my house. And But I'm, I'm, I'm well on my way. And uh, I'll let you guys know when I'm ready, but I ain't ready. So uh, in the meantime... I'm just having some some healthy friendships and uh, seeking to begin what I hope is a 30, 40 year love affair with me, with myself. I want to apologize to my former fiance for, I honestly was so addictive and so needy for her that I couldn't really let her be her and I was I was sort of a bully at times in my pain. And the sad thing is, is now I'm ready to do the work and I could do the work and I could see her and accept her. But uh, in this IFS, it talks about you have um, protectors and sometimes an outer sort of a counter dependent, tough, thick skinned defender takes over and buries the needy parts and I believe that this my, this gal buried her parts that were needy for me and covered over with a protector and she needed to protect herself from me because I was being aggressive and shaming and and uh, harsh and intrusive. So I, I'm so sorry for that. Well, uh, God bless you all. Uh, learn to love yourself. I love myself. Did I mention that? If you haven't joined our YouTube channel, it's Family Tree Counseling at YouTube, and we're sneaking up on 5,000 uh, subscribers, and we're about at uh, 525,000 views, and it's been a little slow lately, so uh, I don't know. Whenever I focus on narcissism, uh, it blows up, and you know I get tons of views. It's like people want to, they want to focus on that evil bad guy out there and 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 that really wasn't my message but i think that the title sort of attracted some people um, ultimately if you're in pain and you got wounded your problem is you and it's your childhood visit our website familytreecounseling.com i've got some books on there that are inexpensive and helpful one on abandonment one on shame I got a book coming, In the Eye of the Tiger. Peter Levine, a great uh, teacher uh, and professor and psychologist uh, on healing trauma, says trauma, healing trauma or having trauma is very much like there's a tiger in the room, like a man-eating tiger in the room that's scary. That's what trauma feels like. And... I've been in the eye of a storm. I've been in the eye of the tiger. Plus it conjures up Rocky Balboa, Eye of the Tiger song. Um, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make videos that basically tell you everything I know about healing trauma and about healing the wounded little kid inside. And I'm going to tell, I think, a very engaging, very powerful story. I think it'll help a lot of people when you're up in the middle of the night and you're alone and you feel empty and you're desperately sad, I hope these, these videos touch you and connect with you. You're worthy. Learn to love you. Thanks for watching. God bless.